Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all my blessed and beloveds out there. It is Living in Thriving Time and I am Rusty. Today is part two with Jennifer, my wild rock star friend. We're going to talk a little bit about marketing. We're going to talk a little bit about whatever we end up talking about because that's the way that interview always goes with Jennifer. So exciting. Uh, sister from a different mister, for sure. She's um, quite an interesting woman. So I'm glad that we're doing a second part to this. The first time we had some technical difficulties and um, so it'll be really entertaining to see what happens today. You just never know. You have to be flexible. You have to be flexible because if you're not, then stuff happens like tornadoes and hurricanes and dog barkings and alien spaceship flying over and just wild stuff. Right, Jennifer? Yes. How are you? Good morning, my friend. How are you? I was looking forward to seeing your face this morning. I'm like, hey, I get to play with my rock stars. I know, right? Oh. And we just had the solstice, the longest day of the year. Amazing. Girl, Amazing. I talked to my ex-husband that day. It was the longest day of the year. I'm telling you. <laughs> Oh, I love you. Oh, what's good in the world? Tell me, tell me. Um, I'm alive. I'm ornery. I cleaned my Nerf gun so I could play today. I ate about a half a pint of strawberries. Wow. And my dog is still obsessed with licking her bottom. That's <laughs> my life. How is your life going, my friend? Oh my goodness. I got a little sunburnt yesterday. I went kayaking and then I, I made the mistake of, of staying out in the sun longer than I should have. But um, at least I have some color. <laughs> well, you know, I am very tempted to kind of poke you a little bit, but it's here in California. I'm here in Florida. So it's just not going to actually titillate that ornery side of me. But, That's okay. Yeah. At least I'm getting my base tan for when I visit Florida. <laughs> <laughs> when you come back to see me. Yeah, right. <laughs> so today, my prayers are that we can actually get through some interesting stuff without technological issues. And um, I know that I had a lot of questions for you last time, but because I've had 15 people in between you and then, I have no idea. So we're just going to start from scratch. So it's ready? perfectly fine. And also, too, here's the cool thing. You might get different answers. So, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You're human. This is great. Who are you? What do you do? And what makes you, you? Oh my goodness. I am Jennifer Filzen. I am the rock star of rock star marketing. Um, yes, I am a bona fide certified Grammy qualified rock star who is a, you know, a middle-aged white woman from the suburbs who uh, doesn't look like the, the typical, the typical rock star, but I was able to use social media in its infancy back in 2007 and 2009, when MySpace was the big platform and Facebook and Twitter were just babies in the field. Now, of course, that's all different, but essentially the getting to the punchline of it is I made a, I, I lost a lot of money uh, putting my music together and doing all the promotion. But the return on investment is I established the street credentials to have a very thriving digital marketing agency where we specialize in telling the story of our clients and thus rockstar marketing. We specialize in SEO content, which is the, the content that goes on your website, telling the story, social media, blogs, uh, customer reviews, video marketing. We're essentially the storytellers. And you do it specifically for cars, which just kind of makes me go, what? Well, well, auto repair industry is our primary industry. We do work with other industries like construction and med spas and dental and education and legal. But yes, I would say at this moment, 80% of our business has been focused on auto repair because we love it. Vroom, okay, vroom. so vroom, vroom, right? All right, so sexy chic, let's talk about this. Let's just go into... Facebook, I spent well over $75,000 over the last 11 years with Facebook. I got hosed. I got totally taken. I was hacked. Facebook has not responded to any of my requests. They've ignored me. 
I've sent out certified letters. So I don't Facebook any money at all ever again, because if they're going to do that to small business, um, that's a lot of energy and time to build a page of 25,000 people internationally and spend all that money just to be hosed. Um, mm. So in that light, let's just talk about what other alternatives do I have to get cut through the noise mm. and not use Facebook? Mm. Okay, what a, what a great question. And I don't one. know all of the details, but I will say this. I'm going to use a story about music, okay? When you go into a room and you're listening to a guitarist, the music is coming from the guitar, yes? Now, if the guitarist wants to be heard in a larger room, then that guitarist needs to hook up to an amplifier and some speakers. The amplifier is not where the music comes from, but it's, it's a conduit that allows the, the music to come from the guitar and be heard over a broader audience, yes? And you're the amplifier, right? Well, actually, your website is the guitar. Mm -hmm. Facebook, Twitter, Clubhouse, YouTube, Google, LinkedIn, Instagram, they're the amplifiers. Mm -hmm. So the real source of the music is the guitar. The real source of who you are and where you should be directing all of the traffic is your website. Yeah, but I, I am not a website person. And if you've ever perused my website, it's very third grade because unfortunately I'm not a web person. And everybody who's ever looked at it, they're like, oh, it's gonna cost you $1,500. No, it's not gonna happen. Well, and there are, there are different ways around that as well. I mean, yeah, a, a, ch a cheap website that is worth its weight is, is gonna be that because you, you have to look at, does it have the keywords? Does it have, I mean, when we mm. write content for a, a client, we're writing up to 90 pages of keyword rich storytelling content that's unique. And if you want to catch more fish, you have to have a bigger net. So I'm going from the music analogy to the fish analogy. So sorry for my analogies, but the, the storytelling is, is more easily understood. You know, a lot of people will have like, you know, a five page website, home, about us, contact us, the services and something else, like maybe, uh, you know, customer reviews or whatever. So that five page website is going to catch a, a few fish, but which would you prefer? A big net of five pages that captures a couple of fish or a larger site talking about all the things that you do of about 90 pages that captures more fish. And I've seen it over and over and over again with auto repair and, and of course other industries, but I'm just gonna use auto repair as my example because I think everyone pretty much is familiar with cars if they're in the United States because we're a, such a car culture, right? So what can those 90 pages consist of? Well, it can of course consist of home, about us, contact us, schedule an appointment, you know, services we offer, et cetera. But we can list all the different automobiles that they service. Toyota, Chevy, Maserati, Fiat, Porsche, whatever, right? And then there's all the different systems within the car. Timing belt replacement, brake system, air conditioning. Boy, in the heat wave, we really want to focus on air conditioning, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're in Texas, forget about it. Oh, wow, poor babies. <laughs> right? <laughs> but the thing is, is that it's so easy, especially when talking about cars. When you talk about the car systems, when you talk about the car brands, when you talk about all the things that we do around cars, preventive maintenance, uh, pre-purchase inspection, all kinds of stuff. It's easy to come up with 90 pages. So 90 pages, that seems very exhausting to me. Like that seems like something that um, is... A lot. It is a lot. That's why people hire us because they're like, oh, hell no. <laughs> and then we're like, we can get it done in two weeks. But the thing is, is that yes, it, it really is. Here's the thing. And again, I don't know anything about your situation, but I'm, I'm just saying all this with love, love, love. 
which is going to be more to for, more affordable spending $1,500 on a website that's really going to convey your message and, and find more fish or spending $75,000 on Facebook that doesn't really give you a home. I home, 2020. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so like, it's, it's kind of like using another analogy, you know, which would you rather do own your home or rent it? I think, I think if you're having a business, you need to own that home. You need to have a clear website where the music comes from, where you can capture more fish, where people can go to you and all the other, all the other channels are amplifiers of your message. It's like, it's like Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and Clubhouse and all those. It's like, you know, when you're in love and you want to shout from the rooftops and the mountaintops that you're in love. Well, okay. When you are in love, not when you're in hate, <laughs> but when you're in love, right? I love my you know, dog, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, I'm sold. There you go. <laughs> then you're shouting it from the rooftops. Or you're shouting it from the mountaintops. And those mountaintops, rooftops are the social media channels. So that's very interesting. Now, if you're a startup company and and you're not really well, you know, you're not well versed in this, what kinds of fees do you think? And maybe that's a loaded question. You don't have to actually answer that. I don't really know because everybody is different. I mean, I mean, you can find really talented people overseas that are working for four to six dollars per hour. Yeah, I know that website. They're not very good. Well, <laughs> correct well, all the English. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. It's like it's like you know you know that old adage: you get what you pay for. Facebook is relatively free until you really want to get some traction. I mean, it used to be free back in the early days. Oh, hell yeah. You just put your stuff up and there you go. You're seen by everybody because it was a small enough network yeah. and they have shareholders and the shareholders want to get their return on investment. So of course they're, they're, they're following the exact same model as that all the television networks have done all these years. The television networks have offered free content, but you got to sit through the commercials, right? Well, guess what? Marketers ruin everything. So sorry. And you have to sit through the commercials of YouTube and Facebook, which is so irritating, <laughs> but sometimes, yeah, it's, it's like how fun. they are able to thrive and survive and continue what they're doing. Cause those servers are expensive, right? All that stuff to run it. It's expensive. But, but like you said, like you get what you pay for. So, you know, our content, this is not just the not just the website, but our content of writing those 90 pages just starts at $5,000 because that's my team, you know, interviewing you and listening to you for like two hours. What makes you special and unique? What is your why? Who is your target demographic? What are your services? What are your geolocations? There's, you know, it used to be, it used to be that you could have your 16 year old kid build a website, build a website for you and everything was fine. Now it's gotten so sophisticated because we're in a commodities market, right? It used to be the wild, wild west of the internet. And the more, um, the more things get common, the more commoditized it becomes. And so, yes, I mean, you throw a stone, you hit a marketer, but what type of marketer are they? I'm the storytelling type. I'm the, I'm the content writing type. There is data. There's, you know, all the different people who are like, I have a million followers. Okay, that's cool. I'm really glad that you have a million followers. That's really impressive. I'm not taking anything away from that. But how many of them are actual customers? You know, so well, in the rule of sales, you want at least 10%, right? So if you have a million better. customers, yeah. then you have your own marketing team doing your stuff and you're out on an island in Bora Bora hanging out with a martini. Like, I mean, that's you know, it's funny too, because there's a lot, there's a lot about the digital nomad lifestyle. And uh, a lot of that was crushed during the pandemic, right? A lot of people were like, nope, can't do that. But now that things are starting to open up and hopefully these third and fourth waves don't, uh, you know, close borders again. It's, it, it's hard to tell, right? But let me tell you something. When you're out on the road, I'm about to go out on the road. I have to teach in Atlanta at a conference, teach my marketing classes. And uh, I work harder. I mean, I already work hard at home, but I am not sipping martinis. If I am sitting, sipping a martini when I'm out traveling and doing work, I am doing it with the clients as a networking, get to know you, love you kind of deal. But, oh my God, I'm working harder when I'm traveling. So I don't know how they do it. 
I think it's really interesting. Well, they do it because their home is what they're traveling in usually. And that's my biggest fantasy. So, you know, you're always traveling with your office. There's not really an inconvenience of taxi cabs and hotel Wi-Fi. Like when I was, when I was, went to New England this summer, um, half of the hotels I went to, their Wi-Fi wasn't able to handle the bandwidth of what I need to do. Right. And that's a little frustrating. Um, but, you know, post Corona and everybody's adjusting and, and getting back to some sort of collective humanity. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it because there's no such thing as normal. I hate, I hate it when people say that. I got gotcha. you. Um, but anyway, so talk to us about, you know, like the 101 of marketing. What if I were completely daft and that's not a bad thing because in a lot of subjects I am and I accept myself. But I'm starting a business. I really don't know much about marketing. What kinds of questions are good questions to ask so that you can kind of vet the marketer? Because there's a lot of, well, icky people out there that don't actually put the customer first. They just want to make sure the money is in the PayPal. Know what I mean, Jellybean? Yeah, I totally get it. Um, okay, marketing 101. First off, everything that you present is marketing, even in life, right? You wanna date somebody, you wanna attract somebody, you take a shower, hopefully, right? You brush your teeth, you know, you put on some nice clothes, you know, you'd ha you, have your, you have your different identifiers that indicate your status, you know, uh, whether they be tattoos or driving a BMW or driving a diesel truck or wearing a baseball cap or wearing, um, you can tell I don't have them. It's the, those really nice little high heels with the red bottoms. Yeah, so, the expensive ones. I don't know. I want to say, I don't even remember. It starts with an L. Anyway, I'm sure all your educated people will <laughs> forgive me. I've been living in yoga pants for like the last 16 months. I've lost, I've lost my brand names. <laughs> anyway, when you are out in the world, you are, you are marketing yourself. You are presenting who you are. I want to remind everybody that what you do for your business, every single thing you do from how you answer the phone to how you respond to the giving and sharing of information to the, okay, my PayPal account, you haven't paid it yet. Let me chase you down. That's all the promise of the customer service experience. That's what marketing is. It's the promise of the customer service experience. So what is it that you want to promise? What is it that you want to tell them about you? Well, first off, you need to define so you don't look like, I think we talked about penguins. We talked about penguins and how, how, how do you tell a penguin apart? Well, well, you know, penguins or dogs or cats, unless they have unique markings, it's really difficult to tell them apart, but you get a German shepherd next to another German shepherd next to another German shepherd. It gets a little confusing because their, their colorings and, and markings are pretty similar, right? So you really have to stand out. You have to figure out what makes you special and unique. What is your why? And you need to tell everybody what those unique dif differentials are about you and your business. Because if you just say, yeah, I'm a marketer, ho hum. Like, I don't care. Like what kind of marketer? Oh, I'm, well, start with the result. As a result of the, the marketing efforts that we do, we help clients reach their next million dollars in revenue. Well, how do you do it? Well, we do it by plucking at the heartstrings of their ideal audience so they can't help but want to work with them. Okay, well, then what's the next step? Well, I'm looking for auto repair shops or small business owners or people in the legal industry who want to take their business to the next level. Who do you know? And by asking, who do you know? It doesn't put them on the spot. It allows them to think, Oh, well, there's, there's Jerry down the street. He's a good friend of mine. He was mentioning that he needs some help. So really it's like, Oh, you know, I could have just said, I'm a marketer. And I think marketing, I think, I think if you're going to be an authentic and real marketer, marketer, you have to be a relationship builder. You have to develop a rapport and marketing is all about relationships. It's not a can't cookie cutter cans, 
situation. Yes, SEO, search engine optimization, can be cookie cutter because no. we have a limited we have a limited vocabulary and we use that vocabulary and mold it to the client. However, the ultimate vision or the ultimate summary of that marketing has to be very individualized, very fingerprinted and very personalized because not all companies are alike. They don't have the same owners, bosses, managers, temperaments, desires, or even the ability to understand the information you're giving to them. I mean, I've worked with some marketing or I've done some marketing for companies that, um, just wanted to pay me money and have me take care of it. You know, and I love those customers because I'm like, woohoo! But, <laughs> but that's not ultimately what a good marketing person does, right? Right. And also, too, like, we're the storytellers, but I'm not telling you that I'm uniquely the website builder. You know, the website builder, that's a whole other discipline. I do have my website team, husband, who, who works with certain clients, but we also can outsource that to another, another partnership that we have that's really good. Um, but the thing is, is that, yeah, I tend to stay in my lane. And when people ask me, hey, Jen, can you do this? I'll be like, I can, but let me tell you where I'm weak. And I want you to make your decision based off of where I'm weak. And here are my strengths, here are my weaknesses. You make your decision. And I've, had, I've actually had clients saying, well, I love you so much that I'm okay with you learning. So let's do this, you know, but if it's not a right fit, that's fine. Go, go do what's best for you and your business. We'll always be friends and I'll always be your head cheerleader. And well, and I love the fact that you, you do exactly what needs to be done more so. And here's my strengths. Here's my weaknesses. I have people over here that I know can do these things way faster, way smarter, way cooler than I can do them. Let me connect you or, you know, Back. however however that works and there are a lot of people who don't do that they think that they can take everything on and it's just not worth it like many years ago we had a link a leak in our plumbing and it was a brand new house we just finished building it and my basement filled up oh so i had a few choice words oh but the cool thing is i called the plumber it got fixed. One of the concrete trucks ran over the drain system. We didn't know, nobody knew. And so that had to be dug up and redone. And that's, you know, basement still filled with mold, but I don't live there. My ex-husband does. Okay. Wow. Um, wow. What, a, what a headache. Yeah. What a headache. But here was the thing at first, my ex-husband, cause we literally built the house um, ourselves. We're like, Oh, maybe we can lay all the piping. Maybe we can do that. And I'm sitting here going, we have to do the sheetrock. We're doing the mudding, the taping, the spackling. You know, we've built walls. We've, we've done the floors. We've blah, blah, blah. No, I'm not a plumber. I give, uncle. I'm not a plumber. And that was so freeing to me that I'm not an electrician. I'm not a plumber. And I don't want that aggravation. And what was great about that is the lesson in return was something was broken and it wasn't my responsibility to fix it. I got it fixed. It was somebody else's to do, not me. <laughs> yes. And oh, yeah. we have to really look at our business and pretty much anything that we do in our life with, okay, yes, you might be able to do it. Yes, you can learn to do it, but it's so much easier to hire somebody to do it for you. And if something happens, they can fix it and it doesn't suck up your time. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about that. I remembered owning a house and deciding that I was going to paint it. So I went to Home Depot. This is just the hallway. I was like, ooh, let's, let's make a different color. And I, it was just the hallway, honestly. <laughs> just the hallway. And I went to Home Depot and I bought all the stuff, the tape, the rolling pads, the brushes, the handles, the, the paint itself, the, 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 um, the drop claws, all the stuff. Hell, I even had to buy a ladder because I didn't have a ladder. Like I had to buy all that stuff. And then I had to prep it. God. And then I had to do it. I think I was halfway through the damn project where I was like, screw this. I'm calling a professional. And guess what? 
the professional cost me about the same amount as it did all the materials and all the time that I wasted. Like they did it in one day and I did it over the process of three weekends. Like, come on. Same thing, you know, I get a lot of, um, I handle customer reviews for auto repair shops and there's always the do-it-yourselfer. Oh, that place is so expensive. I could just get the part from fill in the blank and do it myself for 25 bucks. Ah, don't go to this place. They're just ridiculously priced. I had to pay 200. Okay, let's talk about what goes into that 200. First off, they own a building. They own a lot of really expensive equipment to diagnose your piece of crap Toyota that's from like 1995. You cheap bastard. <laughs> Plus, you said that with a smile. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, they've got a warranty based on the, you know, the parts and labor on that thing that's covering you nationwide. So even if you drive out of state, you can take care of that free of charge to you if something breaks down because they stand behind it. There's a lot of training that goes into the technicians, not to mention these are master level technicians. They're not just somebody working underneath a shade tree in their backyard doing this for you. There's a lot that goes into making this business a successful business. And would you go to the grocery store and pick up a steak and walk over to the restaurant and ask the chef to just cook it for you? No, that's I, tacky. I've had customers do that actually. <laughs> so, so the thing is, Florida, you that, know how it is. You were you were down here once. Yeah. <laughs> yep. For sure. For sure. I mean, it it is it is remarkable how people apply their experience to the whole thing, but they're not getting the thing. So here, here, they're not getting the full picture of the service. So as a business owner, here's what you need to do. You need to really explain and educate to everybody the extra value, the extra attention, and the extra care that you pour into each project, into each service, into each client, and that validates the pricing. Sure, you just grab a part and throw it on. Well, that's one thing. I would do that. I would do a freebie if I have a relationship with somebody. But if I don't know them, that's that's definitely my time. Well, and that's the part that I think people are um, absent-minded about. And I, and I use that in a very gentle, motherly, loving way. Um, because yeah, you can get it for $25 and blah, 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 blah. And you can do it yourself five hours later, like SpongeBob would say, you know, five hours later. Right. And how many, what is your hour worth? Like my hours are worth way more than, no, I, no, no. Right. And it took me a lot of um, ego shaming to get to that place where like, no, you can't, you can, but you're not going to, you know? And it's like, it's that self-talk. And it's really impressive when, a lot of people come to that realization that, okay, stop. Yes, you can get the parts for less, but what is your hourly time? How much, if you wanted to go out into the real world and get a job, what do you think your hour is worth? Right. And then break it down. And then right. you look at it and you're like, oh shit. Right. Stop with my time. So true. So true. Or just, or just, you know, um, how much anxiety do I want to bring on myself and how much am I willing to pay to not have that anxiety? I can write about brake repair and auto, automotive air conditioning repair all day long. Can I do it? Hell no. I don't know how to turn a wrench, but I know how to find really good people who do. And that's, that's where as a business owner, no matter what kind of business you have, to be the best leader in your organization or in society or, 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 you have to be able to delegate responsibly. Yeah, it's true. It's so true. You know, um, a, a parent in a household, who would you rather have do the chores, yourself or the kids? Come on, the kids, right? You wanna have the kids do the chores because you know, you're working 
and you're working is, is what's paying the rent and all the other things. Have the kids help you with the chores. You don't have to do that all yourself. Well, and I also think you don't know what you don't know, which was the premise of this show. And <clears throat> to be a really good leader in whatever your world is, you, you are much better to hire people who know more than you do about that particular subject because it's also a learning time. Like you can also learn and, and mimic and study and ask questions and watch a professional do what they do magically. Not to say that you're going to take their job or anything strange like that, but to at least educate yourself so that the next time you either have a really good relationship with that contractor, whatever they do, or you have more arsenal to ask better questions for the next person you hire. Oh, so true. Okay. So you know how you were saying earlier that you're like, ah, websites, ah, right. But you know, you try doing things yourself and then you go, all right, my, my, uh, weak link, my, um, Achilles heel accounting. So I'm running my business for the first nine years, doing it myself, handwriting invoices, doing all these things, uh, taking check or bank deposit only because I didn't know how to do the whole credit card thing. Like there was, there was so much that I didn't know, but I just knew that I needed to get the money. So then I hired my first bookkeeper and God bless her. Cause it was like dealing with a toddler. I was the toddler because I didn't know what I wanted and I didn't know what I didn't know. And I was having fits around it. Cause it's like, I need my money. And she's like, I'm going to help systematize this. And I'm like, ah, and then, uh, then I would find a different bookkeeper who promised bigger and better things. Cause I got to another level. So I was like, okay, I'll go with this person. And then she systematized me even further. And then that dropped off. And then I found somebody else who then took it another level. And I had to stair step with them because taking me from zero to three was not, it was like, it was like taking me from zero to one was mind blowing enough. And I needed, there were things that I needed to let go. Now I am very proud to say, thank God, that my bookkeeper is amazing and my accountant is amazing. The systemization, like everything, it's like oh, money magically flows into my accounts twice a month. Like I had, but I had to go through those growing pains of figuring it out and I had to get out of my own goddamn way. So my rock star friend, the trickle down economics does not work for our beautiful conversations. And I do adore you so much, but it's time for you to dun -dun -dun -dun, plug yourself. <laughs> Thank you, darling. It's so great seeing you. Honestly, I just adore you. Thank you for having me on and I'll catch you later, Gator. Oh, no, no. Hey, don't hang up. This oh, is you plug yourself, you silly goose. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said we have to go. <laughs> no, we almost have to go. Almost. Keyword. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm like, okay, bye. <laughs> like, one and done, okay. baby. Gotta go. <laughs> okay. If you if you want the easy way to get a hold of me, Jennifer Filzen at gmail.com. J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R-F-I-L-Z-E-N at gmail.com. You can also go to jenniferfilson.com and you can find Rockstar Marketing. You can find my books. You can find my husband and I doing West Coast Swing Dancing. You can find my Connecting with Jennifer Filson show, which of course I'd love to have Rusty on. We have like so many things on the jenniferfilson.com, but if you need marketing help, I love sharing information. Do not be shy. I am totally happy to give you a, a free consultation and tell you some ideas that you can take and run with, even if you're not ready to work with me. I'm an idea person, I'm a creative, I love to help. And if you would like to call me or text me, I'll even be so bold as to share my cell phone, 408-833-9868. I'm truly here to serve and I, I would love to help you with your business. All right, so Rockstar, let's talk a little bit quickly because TikTok, right? Yeah. Um, where do you even begin with learning what your company needs for marketing? I mean, you do automotive, you do spas, you do 
legal and, and various other things, um, which I love. I, you can't have all your eggs in one basket. But say that, like I have a friend who's a shaman. She, she uh, works with animals. She does Reiki on animals. Nice. But she has no clue about mm -hmm. marketing. Yeah. And like a mother-daughter relationship, I can say so much, but it's just like, yeah. what kinds of things would you suggest that she ask her potential marketer for? Oh my gosh. I know it's it, tough. It's like, I've got a question. Let's throw it in the deep end of the pool. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> first thing is, you know, she needs to know any, anybody starting their business they need to know what is it that i'm offering okay i'm gonna i'm gonna use my wonderful husband as an example my husband is a wonderful comic book artist oh my god he's so enormously talented so that is the passion and the thing that pays the bills is his, him doing the graphic design and illustration for rockstar marketing so he's in charge of our media division so we he definitely gets fed because of his wonderful talent in graphic design, website building, video marketing, et cetera, et cetera. But the passion, the love, the, if I could do this without having to worry about money is doing his art and he's extremely good at it. So he's been doing a lot of videos showing him doing his art process. He's, he's, he's really doing a fantastic job, a really fantastic job of promoting his stuff online. And he's getting some followers, he's getting some traction. The thing is though, there's a couple things that, and I'm not picking on my husband necessarily. I'm just, I'm just spelling it out there as from the marketer's lens, because I believe me, I support my husband and everything he does. But looking at the marketer's lens, followers are not the same as paying customers. So I don't care how many followers you have. Is anyone buying it? And if they aren't, why aren't they? Is it because you aren't asking? A lot of times people forget to ask. I know that sounds really dumb, but like you have to actually ask, hey, would you like this? Would you like to buy this? How much are you willing to pay for this? Like a lot of people just forget to ask. It's like, I'm having a party. Yay, I'm having a party. Gosh, I wonder why I'm going broke putting on this party. I'm having a party. Did you ask the people attending to help pay for it? Oh, no. <laughs> well, that's the first step, right? And I, think that's a, I think that's a whole show within itself <laughs> is getting out of your own way in, in that. I'm I am horrible. Horrible. I will be the first to admit I don't ask shit. I just do. And I get uncomfortable when I have to ask. And that's a huge hurdle to get over. That's like shaming your ego about the plumbing on top of having to shame your ego over asking. Like, it's okay to ask. Well, and it is the promise of the customer service experience. So if you're attracting those customers, it's like, and we're going to do all this for you. And yeah, this is an uncomfortable conversation. But you know what? Money is a dignified conversation. Because the people who know and love you and want what you have to offer are willing to pay for it. Let them gift you the reward of your time and effort. It's a very dignified conversation. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You have to eat and they need your service. Hello. Ask. Love it. Jennifer, once again, big hugs and smushy kisses to you. And definitely don't be a stranger. I'd love to have you on again because we always have a fun time. And I, know, I don't right? know how we haven't met before, but I swear to God, you're a sister from a different mister. So, Likewise, girl. Likewise. And you know what? I'm going to be in Florida in a couple of weeks. It's going to be a lot of family stuff. We're having some end of life conversations. Um, yeah, that's tough stuff. So, you know, Zoom When me. I get out and I can go play, you're on my list. All right, groovy. See you, then. See you then. Thank Bye. you. Bye. That was Rockstar Marketing with my friend Jennifer, and she's just a hoot. I just absolutely love her energy and what she brings to the table because it's not orthodox, and it's authentic, and it's real. And um, so if you need marketing tips or tricks, reach out to Jennifer. She would love to have that conversation. And I have to say... <clears throat> while we were interviewing, I was sucking down my vitamins. So she was kind of looking at me funny, like, why aren't you taking pills? It's just vitamins, Jennifer. Just my vitamins. Lord. 
drinking my agawa. It's not the vodka yet. One day, that's a lot of vodka. No, I, water, H2O. <laughs> so Jennifer, when, when you watch the end of this video, um, I'm sure you'll get a little bit of a giggle because it's, it's vitamins and water because that's the way I live because that's what I do. I'm old. Anyway, know that you're loved. Know that you're beautiful. And guess what? Do something kind for somebody else today. Shut up. Do I say that every single show? Why? Because I think it's so important. I think it's the essence of life is to be part of your community in a positive and uplifting way. And you can do it. Simple cup of coffee, simple smile. Most of us are maskless now, so that's kind of a cool thing. Minus the spinach in people's teeth and you just really wanna, all right, it's a mother, it's a mother thing, Never mind. We'll bypass that. Until next time.